Hey guys and girls. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I personally like to structure my projects and organize my scripts. So to get started, I'm first going to create a base plate project. And inside of server script service, I'm going to create a new script and delete this first line here. Now, what this script's going to do is loop through every descendant inside of server script service. And if it finds a module script, it's going to load that module script and add it to the global table so that we can access it from anywhere in this project. So to do this, I'm first going to create a loop for i dot instance in i pairs game dot server script service get descendants do. Now I'm going to check to make sure the descendant is a module script. So I'm going to say if instance dot class name is not equal to module script, then continue end. But if the instance is a module script, I'm going to add it to the global table. So I'm going to say underscore G and I'm going to use the instance's name as a key. And then I'm going to use the require function and I'm going to require the module. Now let's create two module scripts. And these module scripts can be anywhere inside of server script service. So if I wanted to, I could create a folder and I could call it scripts. And inside of here, I can add a module script and another module script. Now it's very important that the module scripts have unique names because we are using the name as the key and if they have the same name, they will overwrite each other on the global table. So I'm going to call this script A and this one script B. And inside of the script, I'm going to say print script A loaded. And I'm going to do the same for script B. And if I run the game, we can see that script A and script B were both loaded. Now let's assume that script B's job is to create a part and to provide a function for other scripts to simply position that part. So I'm first going to say local part equals instance new part. And I'm going to say part dot anchored equals true and say part dot parent equals workspace. And then I'm going to create a function. Now I want everyone to have access to this function. So I'm going to place it inside of this module table that's getting returned. So I'm going to say module dot position equals function. And we're going to take in a position vector free. And then we're going to position the part like so. Now let's make script A use script B's position function. So I'm going to come over to script A and I'm going to say underscore G dot script B dot position. And I'm going to pass in a vector free. So vector free dot new. And I'm going to pass in the values 0, 10, negative 10. Now, if we run the game, we can see that we're getting errors. And the reason we're getting errors is because the order that we get the descendants is undefined. So we may get script A first, or we may get script B first. We have no idea of the order that these scripts are going to load in. And you can see that script A loaded first, and script A is trying to use script B before script B has even had a chance to load. And that's why we're getting an error. So 
to fix this, what we need to do is go into our script that loads all the modules and we're going to loop through every value inside of our global table and call a initialize function. So I'm first going to say for key value in pairs underscore g do and I'm going to say if type of value is not equal to table then continue end if value dot initialize equals nil then continue value dot initialize now currently having a single initialize function is more than enough to fix our current problem but in the future when we start to create classes we're going to need a second function so to do this I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to replace initialize with initiate now inside of script a I'm going to create two functions one called initialize and one called initiate and I'm going to create a print function and I'm going to say script a initialize and in here I'm going to say script a initiate and I'm going to do the same for script b and I'm going to change these to b and I'm going to move this position call into the initiate function and if we run the game once again we can now see that script A gets loaded, then script B gets loaded, then script B gets initialized, script A gets initialized, and then script B gets initiated, and then script A gets initiated, and we no longer have any errors. Now let's create a class. We can place this class anywhere inside of server script service. So I'm going to create a folder, and I'm going to call this folder classes, and I'm going to create a new module script and I'm going to call this class. In order to make a class, we're going to need to create a meta table. And if you don't know how meta tables work, I have a video on my channel describing how meta tables work. So inside of this class script, I'm going to set the index of this module table to itself. So module dot underscore underscore index equals module. Now I'm going to create a new function that allows us to create a new object of this class type. So I'm going to say module dot new equals function. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to pass in a value. And to create the object, we're going to say local self equals set meta table to an empty table and we're going to use the module as the meta table and now I'm going to store this value inside of this new object so I'm going to say self dot value equals value and I'm going to return the object back to whoever called the new function so return self so any value we store inside of this self table will be unique to that object. But any value we store inside of the module table will be shared between all objects. So let's create a function that's going to print this value. And because I want this function to be shared between all objects so it doesn't consume too much memory, I'm going to create the function inside of the module table. I'm going to say module dot print equals function and I'm going to pass in self and then I'm going to say print self dot value. Now inside of script A, I'm going to create two objects using this class. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete all these prints as we now understand the order that this script is being called and 
I'm going to say local class A equals underscore G dot class dot new. And I'm going to give a random value of 42. And I'm going to create a second object. And I'm going to call this class B. And I'm going to give this the random number of 28. In order to demonstrate that the print function of these two objects are shared in memory, what I'm going to do is say print class A, print, and I'm going to do the same for class B. So if I run the game now, we can see that these characters are the exact same on both functions meaning that they're both shared in the same location in memory. And to use the print function, we will simply just say class A with a colon and print. And I can now delete these two prints. And if I run the game, we can see that it prints 42, which is the value of class A. So now let's overlook our four scripts. When the server first starts, it's going to run this script here first because this is the only script that is not a module script, which is this script here. And what this script here does is loops through every descendant inside of server script service. And if this descendant is a module script, it will require that descendant and save it inside of the global table using the name of the descendant as a key. We then loop through every value inside of the global table. And if the value is a type of a table, which you can see that these modules are types of tables. And if the initialize function exists, meaning it doesn't equal nil, we will call the initialize function. And then we do the exact same for the initiate function. Now, if we look at script B, which is this script over here, we can see that first this script is creating a part and placing it into workspace. And then it's creating a function called position and being placed inside of the module table so that it's made global for all other scripts to use. And this function simply positions the part at the position that is passed into the function. And if we look at our class script, which is this script over here, we can see that first we're creating a new function, which creates a object with the meta table set to the module table. And any value we pass into this function is being stored on the object and then we're returning that object back to whoever called the function and we're also creating a print function inside of the module table so that it's shared between every object and this function simply prints the value that was stored on the self object and finally if we look at script a we can see that when the script is initialized we use the class to create two objects with the values 42 and 28. And then we print the class A's value. And then on the initiate function, we are using script B's position function to position this part at 0, 10 and negative 20. Now let's set up this same system for the client side on a local script. So inside of replicated first, I'm going to create a local script and I'm going to copy everything from this script into the local script. But I'm going to make a small change. Instead of using server script service, we're going to use replicated first. Another thing that I like to do inside of the local script is wait for the game to finish loading like this so that when the module scripts are initialized and initiated we don't have to wait for children 
because we know that all the children exist in the game. And this is also a great place to create our custom loading screen. So at the very top, I'm going to add remove default loading screen. And then I'm going to create a screen GUI and a text label. And at the very bottom, after I have initiated all the module scripts, I'm going to destroy the screen GUI. And now if I want to create a script or a class for the client side, I can simply create a module script inside of replicate first, and I can have it placed in a folder if I wish. And I can say print this was run on the client side. And if I run the game, we can see that the this was run on the client side was called. Thank you for watching the video and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below.